Yes. This is Kate Lawrence, operator. Who's calling, please? Who? Hattie? Are you all right? It's Mother. Well, from Oregon, is she all right? I am. I mean, I was asleep. Why? Mother, it's five o'clock. Oh, my God. You coming here? Oh, of course, we'd love to see you. <laughs> this afternoon? Oh, of course not. Of course it'll be all right. Yes, uh, we were just wondering what... Um, Western Airlines, uh, 3.04 p.m., flight 75... 755? 755. Yes. Sure. Okay. See you then. Bye-bye. Daddy's coming here. 3.04 this afternoon. She didn't say why. She didn't say for how long. What are you doing? I have to write this down, what Hattie said. Three or four, seven, five, five. Make some coffee. Five o'clock in the morning? You don't have to get up. No. Coffee's not a bad idea. You can have a nice, quiet breakfast alone. How about some eggs? No, oh, it's too early. Coffee's fine. Uh, maybe one egg scrambles. You know that call just isn't like Hattie. How about a little diced ham? Oh, it's perfect. Why? Why what? Hattie just doesn't pay pop-in visits. We practically had to drag her here for Nancy's wedding. Something's wrong. Well, what does she say? Exactly. Just meet me at the airport. I've decided to pay you a visit. Well, it sounds like Hattie at her best to me. As long as you're scrambling, I should make it two eggs. As long as you're sitting, why don't you butter the muffins? Please? Breakfast is ready. I'll be there in a minute. a quiet breakfast between husband and wife. You haven't been up at this hour since infancy. To what do we owe the honor? I heard the phone ring, and then I smelled coffee and eggs. You can start in on mine. I'll make more. What was the phone about? What are you both doing up? Your grandmother called. She's coming this afternoon. Are you kidding? That's great. What time? Who's coming? Hattie's coming. Uh, it would be refreshing if you were to say good morning. First. Good morning. Mm, good morning. Buddy, you'll have to clear your photography stuff out of the guest bathroom and into your own. But Mom, Hattie won't mind. I will. Okay. Why is she coming all of a sudden? Who cares why, as long as she's coming. Flight 192, now boarding at gate 40. There she is. Grandma, over here. Oh, God. How old she looks. Kate. Mother. You look 
It's wonderful to see you. If you're trying to say that I look thin, you're right. I do. Which is more than anyone would say about you. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> How is the flight? Bumpy. The way I like it. Is your movie? No, there wasn't time. But they gave me plastic things to stick in my ears. Earphones. Oh, nothing but syrupy violin music going on and on. But I kept the plastic things. Here. You can have them. <laughs> Father, what made you decide to visit all of a sudden? I just felt like it. Any special reason? No. How's Letitia? Buddy. Oh, oh buddy. Okay. For the life of me, I'll never understand why she calls herself that. Probably for the same reason you like being called Hattie instead of Granny. You're both a little eccentric. Now, what are you doing? How's your writing coming on? Oh, I have good days and bad days. That doesn't sound like you. I'd like to read some of your work. No. no. Take Timmy, for instance. He's definitely going to be a giant. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's nine months old, and already he's almost as tall as Buddy. Ha ha. No short jokes, please. Hey, you're a great grandmother. That must be weird. Weird's the word. Although, at my advanced age. Advanced age? How many women in the world half your age get up and start work at five in the morning? None at this table. No, wait a minute. I got up at four once. Don't remember why. I do. No sexy talk at the table, please. But this is the family hour. Well, it's a good thing for the world, Willie, that people like you and me to keep it moving along. When you inherit the farm, at least I'll know it'll be in good hands. By the time I inherit the farm, I'll be so old, I'll have to get down to the barn in a wheelchair. Custom made. Power steering. Radio and heater. Never you mind. When the place is yours, you'll walk down to the barn on your two big feet, just as I do. In fact, I'm seeing to it that you inherit some very special gumboots I've got stored in the attic. I think we've had enough inheritance talk. Who'd like dessert? Me, me. Then start clearing the table. Trapped by your own greed. Lots of good greed. Did you make that coffee pudding again? Oh, I made apple brown bread. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Please, help. This is good. Good. What do you think? Well, uh, who is it? Very funny. It's Mom. If that were me, I'd have you arrested. Arrested? For overexposure. I think it's very good, buddy. <laughs> I do. I have a terrific one of you and Timmy. I'll go get it. It's in the other bathroom. Get me one and a glass of water. I'll get mom. No, buddy. I'm all right now. But I. I think that... Buddy, I cannot deal with your mother trying to take me over. There. I came here to have a good visit with you all. And it'll be spoiled if I have to endure your mother's fussing. But... The prospect of her bringing me endless cups of tea and countless pieces of dry toast 
please. Let this just be between the two of us. I swear to you. I'm feeling just fine now. But I am a bit sleepy. Good night, dear buddy. Sleep well. Sleep well, Grandma. This looks like an enlarger, doesn't it? Well, yes, yes. It is not. What is it? This is a milkshake machine. Ah. The ice cream up goes up here. Where is it? What? The picture of Timmy and Jeff. I forgot it. You forgot it? Yeah, I got sidetracked by talking to Grandma. Oh? Uh -huh. Well, is she okay? Okay? Yeah, she's okay. Why shouldn't she be? Well, you're in such a rotten mood all of a sudden. I guess I'm just tired. I think I'm gonna go to bed now. Okay. Night, buddy. Willie. Good night. Good night, Jeff. Good night, buddy. Hey, buddy, buddy, what are you doing to me? You're trying to put me out of business? I can't sell this camera at that price. I've got five kids to support. Well, I'm trading in my old one. Hey, last week you said you had three children. I did? Oh, oh yeah, well, we had two nephews move in with us. <laughs> sure. Well, that's my price. Take it or leave it. Do you suppose your mother's ever been in this place? She'd have a fit. But it looks to me like she spends an awful lot of time here. I find her an extraordinary child. Uh, that is an understatement. Ah, uh, buddy, you drive a hard bargain. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 it's a deal. But the tri bottle will be four dollars more. Three. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, if you ever decide to go into business, I nah, forget it. Here, I'll show you how it works. First, you focus it like this, see? Then you cock it, this little hand here. Then you push this little gizmo right here, see? And you move. Move fast because the, that's the starting mechanism and you have just 10 seconds, right? Smile! Ralph immortalized. Hey, you try it. Will you do it? Why me? I know how to use a time exposure. Come on, I don't want to have my picture taken. Ah. Well, that, Doctor, is how I learned that Buddy Lawrence was a vampire. She refused to have her picture taken, ever. Come on, Willie. Hey, I like taking pictures, but I don't like being in them. Please? Okay. Okay. But watch me. Carefully. Just like the man said. Pocket. Press that. You have ten seconds. You're waiting with a big smile. One thousand eight. One thousand nine. The picture is taken. These are very nice cameras. They're made in Germany, you see. <laughs> Some 
blank. You know, that could make a person very nervous. Well, if the chef isn't making Egg Foo Young out of Buddy for trying to take his picture, then the next stop on the Grand Tour will be the Hollywood Wax Museum. Uh, look. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. His name's Singha. Will you please write it down? I promised I'd send him his picture. I got one of them pumping up a duck. I beg your pardon. Well, it's how they prepare him for Peking style. <laughs> That's what I should write down. <laughs> Very interesting food. I'd like to have one of those big pots they use in the restaurant and a cookbook. Do you suppose they sell them anywhere? I'll go ask Sing Hop. Buddy! Buddy! Grandma! Oh. Buddy, for God's sakes, please. I'm sorry. Is she okay? Well, she drank the bouillon and ate the jello. I guess so. She said she's getting up. Oh. I knew it was nothing serious. I knew it. I don't think she should get up. She looks too small. Well, I'm gonna go up and see her. Willie, go the other way. Maybe you can find out what they're talking about. Yes, thank you, Dr. Hackett. Yes, I will. Indeed, I will. Thank you again. He wants to be remembered to your mother, Mrs. Lawrence. Hello, Willie. Dr. Anderson. What did Dr. Hackett say? Oh, go ahead. Well... There's no point in beating around the bush. In plain language, your mother is not in very good shape. Apparently, about two months ago, she suffered a quite severe heart attack. She didn't tell us. No one told us. She forbid anybody to tell you. Not today. Is that another attack? No, but it could very easily have been. The fact is that your mother's heart is just worn out. Getting her through the day is about all it can handle. If overtaxed or overstimulated in any way. see me wearing these, but you're all right. Well, I just came up to tell you that we're all sick and tired of your constant bids for attention. Falling flat on your face in front of Joe Wu's Chinese restaurant is gross. <laughs> Buddy said you were getting up. I decided against it. Now, tell me, what do you think of this? It's beautiful. Glad you like it. It's for the big pine bed at the farm. The one you like to sleep in. Well, you've got plenty of time for sewing. Now, what about the rest of your guided tour? Willie, there are some things I want to discuss with you. Well, we shouldn't talk now. I should just let you rest. Willie, sit down. Willie, when I die, you are going to inherit the farm. There's some things we have to talk about. Well, we don't have to talk about them now. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Willie. I don't want the farm, and I don't want to talk about dying. What are we going to do, Doug? Whatever has to be done. What? She can't live alone anymore. 
Oh, well, first of all, I think we should call Dr. Hackett in Oregon and ask him if she'd be all right on the farm with a live-in housekeeper. Hattie can't afford that. Neither can we. We may have to have her here with us. Can we afford that? What do you mean? Well, in many ways, you and your mother are exactly alike. You're both opinionated, determined to be the one who's right. My God, we'd probably starve to death around here before you agreed about which uh, cereal to buy. You really make us sound charming. Well, you know what I mean. I'm not sure the two of you could make room for each other under one roof. One mistress in the house. We may have no choice. Well, there's always a nursing home. No. Oh, no. You can't say no, Jim. No, I won't even talk about it. Not for my mother. We're a family, for God's sake. We'll have her here to live with us. And we'll make it work. Good. She wouldn't go anyway. of yourself. You've probably been snapping hundreds of them, huh? To have them plastered all over your room. Well, that's all you know. I'm glad you came by anyway. I wanted to talk to you about something. No. Well, I didn't say what yet. If you want to borrow any more of my camera equipment, the answer is no. I've given you all my beginner stuff, and that's all you're going to get until you learn how to use it. It's not that. It's about Hattie. What about her? Well... When you inherit the farm, are you going to live there forever and not come back or go to school anymore? Now, what kind of silly talk is that? Well, you're going to inherit it. She said so at dinner. And it might be soon. Oh, now, that's really dumb. You know, I can't stand you when you're dumb, buddy. Willie, don't get mad at me. Not dumb. Seventy-five calories for your viewing pleasure. Not another word, buddy. Mom, it's only 11 o'clock. Good. Then even if I take my time, I should be able to finish the whole thing by lunch. Well, since food's a nervous outlet, I guess you're entitled. You're absolutely right, buddy. I'm just trying to cheer you up. I would never have known. But I do appreciate it. Where's Hattie? In bed. Dr. Anderson said it'd be a mistake for her to get up today. Needless to say, she doesn't agree. I don't either. Why don't you call a consultation? I'm sure Dr. Anderson would just love to hear your opinion. Well, I'm not trying to be fresh, but... It seems to me... If you make a person like Hattie change what she's used to, she'll get sicker, not better. Buddy, what Hattie's used to and what's best for her are two quite different things now. Hattie knows exactly what she wants to do. 
That night she got here, I went in the bathroom, and she was all doubled up. So I helped her sit down. I gave her a pill and some water. Why didn't you tell me? She asked me not to. You had no right to keep that a secret. Anything could have happened. Mom, it was her own private business. Buddy, Hattie is very sick. But not in the head. Maybe if you let people do what they want to do, when they die, it's a lot easier for everybody. At least that's what I think. You want some? No, thanks. 375 calories. Mm. Are you your mother's daughter? <sighs> 400 calories. 375, and I don't care to discuss it. I said, if you see Willie around, tell him I want him. Mm -hmm. Kate? What, Doug? Is it all right for Hattie to be out in the garden? I thought the doctor said... He that. did. She promised she wouldn't get out of bed until I'd spoken to him. She is impossible. said you were absolutely not to get up today. I heard him. I also heard you. You've already told me three times this morning, and it's only 11.15. Yeah, the best I can do is to sit down while we have this conversation. It's crazy for you to be up. Once and for all, Kate, we might as well get this settled. I don't care to spend the little time I have with you all rehashing the same nonsense. Mother, hush. First of all, you must understand that the person least anxious for me to die is myself. I have the most to lose by it. Watch out, Kate. Don't lose your sense of humor. However, if staying alive means that I'm bound to live every day as though I'm already dead, is dead dull and useless? If that's the case, then thank you. But no, thank you. There's a difference between lying in bed and taking things a little slower. I have no intention of pushing my luck. I'm not stupid. I intend to take as much care of myself as I can stand. Remember me, Kate, how much I always hated funerals. You came to say goodbye. I came to say goodbye to all of you. I was going to do it in my own good time, but now that's out of my hands. I knew it would be hardest for Willie. He adores you. Willie likes older women. <laughs> Poor child. He has to keep pretending there's nothing wrong. He can't face up. It's not like him. He's strong. Seems to be, but he isn't. It's a boy who hurts easily. The idea of my death scares him. He's afraid his heart will break. He's not the only one.
trying to tell me we need more glasses. Sorry. Willie, could you drive me into town? I'd like to visit with Nancy. I can't. There's uh, tons of stuff to do around here. Dad's been after me all morning. Douglas, would you mind if Willie postponed some of his chores? I don't think I feel up to driving, and I'd like to visit... Willie. Just a minute. Willie? Where do you think you're going? Out. Wrong. You're going to go back into the kitchen and apologize to your grandmother for your behavior. Then you're going to drive her wherever she wants to go. Do you understand? You know, I am really sick and tired of everybody in this house telling me what to do. Just a minute, young man. Why do you suppose I contributed five dollars to the Society for the Study of Psychic Phenomena? Mother, are you all right? Oh, Pete, sake, sit down. I'm fine. It's hopeless, Kate. She caught us. Oh. Red-handed. Kate assumes that because I don't drink myself, I'm therefore intolerant of people who do. Nonsense. If you want muzzy minds and impaired liver functions, the choice is yours. You intolerant? Where would I get that idea? I didn't come all the way down here to deliver my temperance sermon. Has Willie come back yet? No. When he does, he'll apologize. No, Douglas. Sorry, I can't have that kind of behavior. Oh, he's angry at me and at age and sickness. And so am I. He'll be back soon. I want to talk to him. I decided to go home tomorrow. Mother, you can't. And if you're about to suggest that I stay on here, absolutely not. Back home, I'll manage for as long as I can. If you and I are under the same roof, Kate, we'll both be dead by the end of the week. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said it, Hattie. decided to go home tomorrow. Yeah, that's probably the best thing. You and Mom would only drive each other nuts. <laughs> You're a pragmatic child, buddy. Mom says that too. You get it from her. She says I get it from you. <laughs> anyway, what does it mean? Never mind. Do you know where Willie is? I think so. When will he be back? Well, if he's where I think he is. He could be there all night. It's open 24 hours. Are you telling me Willie's in a supermarket? Well, I can't say. It's a secret place. He goes there whenever he feels crazy. But I could go get him for you. Could you? Yeah, but you have to promise to lay cheeky for me. Cheeky? Distract Mom and Dad in case they come looking for me. I'm not supposed to go out late at night alone. Oh, well, then maybe you shouldn't go. Well, it's not dangerous or anything. It's not even far. Oh, no. Buddy, I don't want you to do anything against your parents' wishes. Well, it's necessary. They'd understand that. Well, go on, then. You're an interesting person, Buddy. I'm glad we got to know each other. Grandma wants to see you. It's funny. Well, 
Come on, before they find I'm gone. Next time, try minding your own business. Grandma said for me to get you. Well, you have to get it over with. What? You know. I love you, buddy, but get lost. Shh. I'll just have to stay here, then. No, you don't. I'm afraid to go home in the dark. You weren't afraid to sneak out. I'm afraid now. Liar. I am. Everything's scarier the second time you do it. You told me that. Come in. Grandma, he's back. Thank you, buddy. Get lost, buddy. Don't be angry at Buddy. I asked her to get you. Do you... Do you know that I'm going home tomorrow? I'll finish this. And I want you to have it. That's for the bed at the farm. Yes, it is. So you might as well have it now. I don't want it. Willie, whether you like it or not, there's some things we have to talk about. I am going to die, probably quite soon. And the farm will be yours. I doubt that you'll decide to farm the land. But you might. The way you'd be a natural for that kind of life. Grandma. You must let me finish. If you decide not to live there, I'd like you to promise me not to sell the land to strangers. Hold on to it. There's a man in town, his name's in my will. He can make it pay for itself, upkeep taxes, insurance. It may be selfish of me, but I don't like to think of someone taking a long look at that view from beside the barn and scurrying off to put up a string of tracked houses. It's not fair. Oh. Fair is about all it is. It seems to me that God and nature have arrived at a simultaneous and appropriate decision. I've had a long life and a happy life doing exactly what I wanted to do. Your grandfather and I loved each other very much. I had your mother. Sometimes I think it would have been better for her if she had been more like her father. He was a nicer person than I am, but... I don't want to have this conversation. But I do. Willie, isn't it grand that we don't have to just go away from each other? We can say a right and proper goodbye. I love you. Oh, I know you'll mourn for me, and you'll be in pain. I can't bear that for you. But you know, I believe that nothing ever really ends. I believe in a continuing cycle of life. Maybe being a farm woman has made me feel like that. If you could believe that, you'd understand that I'm thankful to go. It is fair to go when the time has come. I've had pleasure in my life, more than most people. And I've had pain, too, enough to keep me from getting swelled-headed about the good times. And, Willie, I've had the pleasure of your company 
has meant a great, great deal to me. As my nephew. Come in. I have an idea. A good one. I'm going to drive you home. I've talked to Mom and Dad about it. What did they think about it? <laughs> Terrible. But they didn't say no. You call us right away. I will. I promise. Come on, everybody. I want to get a group shot. Well, come on. Come on. You come in, too. Uh-uh. Everybody say cheese. Buddy, I'd like you to be in this one with us. this all week. Oh. Yes.